Hey y'all, it's Zach Lopes. Could you imagine walking through a neighborhood like this and it being an old growth food forest? An old growth food forest? What I love in urban areas is there are large trees that are organized and planted. So you can already take that first leap in imagination of having canopies around you. All you have to do is imagine that they have mulberries and pecans and walnuts and chestnuts and an understory of fruit, pears and plums and cherries, saskatoons and hazelnuts and elderberries and in between raspberries and blackberries and blueberries and currants and gooseberries and underneath that a canopy of chives and bee balm and lemon balm and echinacea and underneath that still all sorts of beautiful and beneficial ground covers like times layered and layered and layered and layered can we actually imagine here more edible and useful landscapes a true human habitat i can can you i think so so like, subscribe if you like, and you want to subscribe, and drop a comment. What do you think an old growth fruit forest would look like in your community? Can you name a dozen plants that would be amazing to see in 20, 30, 100 years? I wanna show us all the potential in a community. One of the neat things about the snow is it's easy to see design. It's like a white page of paper. It's easy to imagine whatever you want because there's actually nothing there. So when I see large trees like this behind me, what I see is what can I put in the space between them? Here in Regina, I'm thinking a whole thicket of choke cherries, which are super nutritious and delicious and great habitat trees. Or even integrating hazelnuts. or perhaps even integrating various hardy berries, like a entire raspberry hedge. So when I look in neighborhoods and I see this much underutilized space, I find a few different design concepts are very useful. The one I just explained is what I call fill in the dot. Meaning there are trees here, dot, here, dot, here, but there's space between where we can put other dots of other varieties of plants. Part of this is beneficial because we can actually replace this urban canopy that's dying and senescing because these are all elms with an understory. So included in that filling in the dot is another concept, which is a canopy replacement concept. We want to go in and make sure that what we're putting in between this tree and this tree is not just a whole bunch of young pioneer species that are fruiting and edible, but also replacement canopy trees. So depending on where you are, you can include into that, you know, maples and oaks. You can have linden, you can have uh, pecan or walnut or um, butternut. There's a lot of different possibilities depending on where you are in your hardiness zone. So what I like to think about too is just overall seeing other types of plants that are existing in this kind 
of year, this time of year, you know, I can see the other tree species very clearly, but this sort of planting where I can see there's a little bit of a hedge somewhere. And I ask myself, can I use the design principle of replacement planting? Where I'm actually looking and seeing that there may be an opportunity here and here and here to see and find the species that are already being planted, but actually replace them with something that is more edible and useful. So behind me, I have a little thicket here, a little tiny hedgerow of an ornamental. Um, maybe it's a little hedge of, uh, you know, bushes or uh, um, some sort of ground cover, depending on what you're finding, but they might just have ornamental uses. So in that case, replacement is about looking at that and choosing a more edible and useful variety in order to enhance the overall ecosystem utility of the neighborhood.